Welcome back to Building Literacy and True Identity here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast with your host, Pastor Denise M. Walker, founder of Hope in Christ Ministries, where we help build biblical literacy through strategies and Bible journaling and assist others with identifying their true identity in Christ. Let's begin. Welcome, 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 welcome back to Building Literacy and True Identity here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Denise M. Walker, and I am the founder of Hope in Christ Ministries, the instructor and the builder of literacy and helping others to find your true identity in Christ Jesus alone. Thank you all for joining me today, and today we're going to continue in Genesis. We've been in Genesis for some time, but Genesis is a very long book, and it is the foundational book. So we're going to, we're almost done with Genesis, but we're in chapter 46 through 47, and we're going to talk about Jacob or Israel's life once again, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your time. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray and ask for forgiveness of our sins. Help us to know your will. Help us to know your way and the path that you have laid out for us. Father, we pray for those that are listening. We pray, Father, that we will remain on the path that you have set forth for your glory to be fulfilled in our lives. Father, we give you glory, and we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you all for tuning in to Building Literacy and True Identity here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. Again, I'm Pastor Denise, and we are here to talk about, um, continue to talk about Jacob and Joseph. And so today, we're talking from Genesis chapter 46 to 47, And it's Jacob's journey to Egypt, Jacob's journey to Egypt. So we always start with our objectives and essential questions because it's based on our literacy or as um, an instructor or a teacher. And so our objective for today is understand that God knows the path. Understand, to understand that God knows the path. So what we go through here in these two chapters, we're going to understand that God knows the path that he has set. Um, The essential question is, how does God lead you down a plain path for his name's sake? How does God lead you down a plain path for his name's sake? Amen. So we're going to begin with the reading of Genesis 46. And 47, and we're only going to read the key verses because both these chapters are pretty long or pretty lengthy, and we're going to read the key verses from the chapter. So grab your Bible, grab your journal, let's dig into the Word. So Genesis 46, the key verses, chapter 1, verse 1 says, So Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to God of his father, Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel in the vision of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. So he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make of you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. Verse 5. Then Jacob arose from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, their little ones, and their wives in the carts, which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So they took their livestock and their goods, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went to Egypt, Jacob and all his descendants with him, his sons and his sons' sons, his daughters and his sons' and his son's daughters, and all his descendants, he brought with him to Egypt. Amen? And the last verse in chapter 46, which is important because it talks about the lineage, the other verses talk about the lineage and all of the people that are coming with Jacob. And the last verse here says, all the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were 70. Amen? So then we go down into... Um, verse 28, 
Then he sent Judah before him to Joseph to point out before him the way to Goshen. And they came to the land of Goshen. So Joseph made ready his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet his father Israel. And he presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. And Israel said to Joseph, now let me die, since I have seen your face, because you are still alive. All right, so we're going to jump down to chapter 47, chapter verse 1. Then Joseph went and told Pharaoh and said, My father and my brothers, their lives, their flocks, and their herds, and all that they possess have come from the land of Canaan, and indeed they are in the land of Goshen. Let's jump down to verse 3. And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we and also our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, We have come to dwell in the land because their servant, your servants have no pasture for their flocks, for the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. Now, therefore, please let your servants dwell in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you. The land of Egypt is before you. Have your father and brothers dwell in the best of the land. Let them dwell in the land of Goshen. And if you know any competent man among them, then make them chief herdsmen over my livestock. And then Joseph brought to his father, Jacob, and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. Pharaoh said to Jacob, how old are you? And Jacob said to Pharaoh, the days of the years of my pilgrimage are 130 years. So then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. And Joseph situated his father and his brothers and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread according to the number in their families. And then Joseph has to deal with the famine as well as his family members. Now there was a was no bread in the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan languished because of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the grain which they bought, and Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. So when the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in your presence? For the money has failed. Then Joseph said, Give your livestock, and I will give you bread for your livestock if the money is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for the horses, the flocks, the cattle of the herds, and for the donkeys. Thus he fed them with bread in exchange for all their livestock that year. When the next year had ended, when that, in, that year ended, they came to him the next year and said to him, We will not hide from my Lord that our money is gone. My Lord also has our herds of livestock. There is nothing left in the sight of my Lord but our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants of Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land may not be desolate. Then Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for every man of the Egyptians sold his field, because the famine was severe among them. So the land became Pharaoh's, and as for the people, he moved them into the cities from one end of the borders of Egypt to the other end. Only the land of the priests he did not buy, for the priests had rations allotted to them by Pharaoh, and they ate their rations, which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore, they did not sell their land. So 
verse 25 of 47. So they said, you have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's servants. And Joseph made it a law over the land of Egypt to this day that Pharaoh should have one-fifth except for the land of the priest, which is not Pharaoh's. Verse 27. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen. And they had possession there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 70 years. So the length of Jacob's life was 147 years. When the time drew near that Israel must die, he called to his son Joseph and said to him, Now if I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. Please do not bury me in Egypt, but let me lie with my fathers. You shall carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I will do as you have said. Then he said, swear to me. And he swore to him. So Israel bowed himself on the head of the bed. Amen. So one thing I wanted to point out here is that then Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for every man of the Egyptians sold his field. Every man of the Egyptians sold his field. So in the midst of what they were experiencing, they were in a great, great, great famine that the people would have died if um, Joseph, um, if God didn't use Joseph to help them survive through that famine, God's wisdom to help them survive. So the objective, again, is to understand that God knows the path. And how does God, the essential question is, how does God lead you down the plain path for his name's sake? And so we read here several things. So we're going to do the, the who, what, when, where, why, how. That's the, what we normally do in um, understanding what's taking place. So we have um, just the who and what for right now. Um, who do we have? The main character here, we have Joseph and we have Israel or Jacob. Um, and in what's taking place, um, he took all of his um, belongings and his family to um, Beersheba and he offered sacrifices and he prayed. He was um, basically concerned because God said to him in a vision, um, do not fear to go down to Egypt, for I will make you a great nation there. So he was—he had some concerns. He—he he didn't want to go. He wanted to see his son. He wanted to see his son Joseph, and he wanted to be with his son, but he had some reserve about it. So God spoke to him, and He said, "He won't remain there." Joseph um, will put his hand on your eyes. So he, God was telling him that he would die in the land of Egypt, but God would send Joseph to bring him out of Egypt. And then the sons carried their father and their little ones and their wives on to Egypt, amen, to the land of Goshen. They left Canaan, um, the promised land, and we noticed they were in Canaan and they left the promised land. They left the promised land. Get that in your spirit. Um, where God had promised he would give them a land. He would give them a land. God didn't promise them Egypt, but God told him, go, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Go ahead and go because the famine was so great. You know, sometimes God just allows things to take place, and that's what was taking place in the earth at the time. So he was saving their lives, and he was going to bring them back to the promise. And, um, to live in Egypt for a time. So they were supposed to go to live there for a time. Seventy persons and all went with Jacob, his lineage. Um, he sent Judah before them to go get Joseph and bring him to meet his father so that he could point the way to Goshen. Joseph came to meet them, and he was reunited with his father, and he wept for quite a while um, in the 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 reunion there, which was an awesome, awesome part of the journey. 
They dwelt in Goshen because the shepherds were an abomination to the Egyptians. So that was for, uh, chapter 46. And then in 47, um, Pharaoh gave them instructions in, in favor, actually. He said, have them dwell in the best of the land of Goshen. And Pharaoh met Jacob, and um, Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And at the time that he met Jacob, he was 130 years old. So we know that he lived there for quite some time after that. Um, they had favor. They had favor. Um, they were provided with food and, and favor during the famine. They, they had this favor, the favor of God. The famine got much, much worse. Money was gone. Um, two years went by, and um, the people had to um, give up their land portions of their land so that they would survive, so they have enough to to purchase. Um, Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. Um, the people would have died otherwise. And we noticed that this was a great, great famine, not just in Egypt, but in the land of Canaan. Um, the priests did not sell their land. The priests did not sell their land. They they lived off of the rations that were given to them, and they, they didn't give up the land. Um, they grew and they multiplied during these hard times. They grew and multiplied during these hard times. Jacob asked not to be buried in Egypt once he passed on, and Joseph swore to him, and he, um, in the next verse, we know that he will um, honor his father's wishes of not being buried in Egypt because that wasn't the promised land. That wasn't the promised land. Amen. So, again, we go back to look at the the objective is understanding that God knows the path. Even if he has to take you around the corner up the street and, and do a little um, re, rerouting, sometimes in our GPS system it reroutes us because some things are going to take place, and he brings us to that destination where we are supposed to be, we are intended to be. So the essential question again is how does God lead you down a plain path for his name's sake? So we're going to talk about how he led Jacob, Israel, down the plain path for his name's sake. So again, we see the reluctance of Israel or Jacob. He knew that God promised Abraham, he promised Isaac, and he was promising him that he would um, make a great nation. And so we noticed that he did just that. He began making that nation in the times of struggle in Egypt. And we know in the further scriptures that he brings them out. He brings them out back to the promised land. He multiplies them and he brings them out. So let's talk about the path. So we're talking about how does God lead you? How does God lead you down the plain path for his name's sake? So we have um, each letter for path represents a question. So the, the P is what was God's purpose for Israel? What was God's purpose for Israel? Well, God's purpose for Israel was for him, one, to survive, for him to live, and for him to become a great nation, the foundational nation that Christ came through, the nation of Israel. And so he, that was his purpose, his purpose. And he had, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So God knew that wait a minute, if they stay here for right now, they're going to die in this land. And that's not my purpose. That's not my plan. My plan is that he lives, that he lives, the generation lives on. So if he didn't take them down to Egypt for everybody to survive, God, there was God's pathway so that the nation, the generations would continue, would continue on. And so that was his purpose. And then the A.M. path, what alternative route could um, Jacob or Israel have taken? Well, he could have said, I'm, no, I'm not going down there. Lord, I'm not, I just, it, it's a famine here and it's a famine there. We are, we are all in a famine. He could have said, I'm not, I'm not going. 
He could have taken that alternative route. He could have said, I'm not going. He could have not obeyed God, and the situation would have been a whole lot different because he did have a free will, and we are born with a free will. And so we have to remember that. And then the T, in what ways, and what, I'm sorry, in what areas did this individual have to trust in the living God? In what areas? Well, he had to trust in knowing that God is all-knowing. That God is all knowing. He's omniscient. He's all knowing, and that He knows the end from the beginning. So we had to trust that God knew what path He was leading Him on. He had to trust that. He had to let us, um, let um, Jacob know that hey, you just got you got to trust me. You can't see it all. Jacob could only see what was in front of him. He could only see what was in front of him, but God knew what was coming. He knew how severe it was going to be, and so he had to trust him. Um, He had to trust him in that way. The areas he had to trust him is trust him to lead the way. Trust him to lead the way, and we have to do the same things. Trust God to lead the way. Trust him to lead the way. I, I don't know who needs to hear that. We need to trust him to lead the way. We need to trust him to lead the way to where he's taking us, to the possession of what he's taking us, because it's bigger than us. Notice he died, and he died, and he was taken back to be buried in the land of Canaan, but the generations lived on. And so they survived so that they, the promise of God could be fulfilled. He died, yes. Yeah. He was over 100 years old. He died, but the promise of God lived on. So we have to trust him to lead the way. And so then the ancient path is how did the individual heal and bring hope? How did he heal? Well, he healed in the sense of he was able to get there and and see his son that he thought had died. And um, he brought hope to the situation where he um obeyed God, and I'm sure they complained and they griped and they said, oh, it's just horrible here because the famine got worse, and he brought hope for them to understand. I'm sure in that time frame that he was still there, and even before that, that he, he he trained them, he, he taught them to trust in the living God, and so that's how he brought hope to them. And then, so those are the, the, the letters in path, um, how God used um Israel, the path that he took him on. And then um, another question that you could sit in and journal for yourself is um, the principles you learned from reading about Israel. What principles did you learn? And then put a star next to the favorite ones. The principles that I learned about reading about Jacob or Israel's life is his obedience, his obedience to, to God's instructions. Again, the free will that God placed on the inside of us says we can choose yes or we can choose no, I'm not going to do that. And so Israel did that. He stood on the promise. He stood, even though he wouldn't see it physically with his eyes. He stood on the promise that God would do exactly what he said he did. And we see today that there's a great nation called Israel. And we see that we are we are part of that lineage. Why? Because Christ is our Lord. And so we we can all we can also say and understand that um it's bigger than us. It's bigger than us. What God is doing in our lives, what he's trying to get us to line up with, and on the path that he's trying to line us on, is bigger than us. It's greater. That, what God said to um, Israel, was greater than him, was much greater. He started with him as a person and then multiplied and said that if your, your descendants will be as the sand. You can't even count sand. It goes through your fingers. He said that this would be the case. And he did that. He did that. Also, the promise of the people that would come to the living God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so that's the path, the path, the path. So, again, in your true identity moment, I didn't say the subtitle, but 
take the principles of Joseph or Israel's life and um, what stands out to you and put a star next to them and, and begin to ask God to help you walk it out, walk it out, walk it out. And, and then trace your path. Trace the path. What's God's purpose for you? That's the P. What alternative routes can you take or have you taken? The T, um, the third letter, is um, what areas do you have to trust God? What areas do you have to put your trust in God? Amen. And then the H, how will you heal? How have you healed? Or in the end, how will it bring hope to you? Amen. Think about a time, a specific time, or if you're still going through that time, walk the path. Walk the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Do as Jacob. Do as Israel. We must all do that. Do as Jacob and do as Israel, which is the same individual that God brought a great promise to pass. And he did just what he said he would, and he'll do the same for us. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word, and we pray, God, that the path will remain on your path. And we won't get off the path and go to the right or the left, but stay on the path of righteousness. Stay on the path of promise, the path of purpose of where you placed us, Father. I pray that those that are listening, that each and every one of us would obey you above anything else, above our own voices and our own fears, and our own limitations. Father, we bless you and we magnify you. For you alone are God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for tuning in to Building Literacy and True Identity here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. Have a phenomenal and blessed day. And also, please grab a copy of Is This English Class or Bible Study Strategies for Studying the Word of God, the Strategies for Building Literacy and Studying the Word of God. Grab a copy from Amazon or reach out to me at www.denisemwalker.com and you can go to my website and and just get to know me a little bit more and and, and send me a message and um, grab your copy from there, message if you want me to um, send you a copy. So thank you for tuning in to Building Literacy and True Identity. This is for the glory of God. In Jesus' name, have a blessed one.